Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for January 4th, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We wish you a very happy new year, and with Epiphany tomorrow on January 6th, we pray as well that you will find the love of God clearly manifest in your life. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from Patsy Bureling, Associate Conference Minister for Generosity Ministries, read this week by your podcast host. This Sunday's lectionary texts focus on the baptism of Jesus. In Mark 4, we hear how John first protested, then consented to baptize the one he hoped to serve, and how a voice and a dove confirmed John's intuition that here was the Son of God. In the 19th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, baptism in the name of Jesus brings the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and it makes all the difference. Most of us mainline Protestant Christians probably have few personal memories of our own baptisms as infants. I can attest that for me, reading the biblical accounts of Jesus' baptism and the baptisms of new believers in Jesus the Christ after his death and resurrection were always both wonderful and a little strange in contrast to the ritualized baptisms of our institutional Christian church. I never saw any baptismal doves or rent heavens in any of the beautiful but staid churches I grew up in. John the Baptist was sort of a divinely appointed advance man for the Messiah. From his wild man appearance, he was clearly not an establishment kind of guy. And I have always wondered how he would have been received had he been appointed to the same sort of task in our century. Without even knowing precisely when or where Jesus would turn up, John was going about baptizing with water, a cleansing baptism of repentance and preparation. Change your ways. Turn away from all that is unseemly and against God's laws, for one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. That was basically John's message. People needed to get ready. And there was this. Though I baptize you with water, John added, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In the gospel account of John's baptism, the Holy Spirit descends like a dove from the heavens just as Jesus emerges from the baptismal waters and the voice of God is heard, uniting God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, physically, audibly, and sensibly, and connecting God for us as parent, child, and spirit. Through our baptisms in the name of Christ, as God's children, we connect with God and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's power is crucial if we are to live up to our potential as Jesus' disciples in this hurting world. Baptism is just the beginning of a life of action, and the Holy Spirit is our internal power pack. The gifts of the Spirit are given variously by God to each Christian to do God's work, to build up the kingdom. Christians are not meant to sit around on their laurels. God gives us the tools, the spiritual equipment, to be effective disciples. It's our job to understand and to use these gifts. Jesus chose you to be his stand-in in this time and in this place. As we move into this new year, ask yourself if you are doing all you can to make a difference as Jesus might have done. With the assistance of the Holy Spirit, how does Jesus want each and every one of us to use our time and talents and resources fully and unstintingly in the coming year.
Here is a prayer for this week. Lord God, you revealed your Son in the waters of the Jordan and anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by the same Spirit that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. Amen. Patsy recommends this excellent resource for studying your spiritual gifts, the Understanding Spiritual Gifts Six-Part Study by Mary Lou Redding, published by Upper Room Books. In the news this week... Late on the night of January 1st, fire erupted in the meeting house of the Summers Congregational United Church of Christ, built in 1842. It rapidly grew to an inferno, and by morning the place the congregation had worshipped for 170 years had been destroyed. More recent additions to the building were preserved by the firewall, and the earnest efforts of firefighters from six communities fighting the blaze, but they suffered smoke and water damage. Fortunately, there were no injuries in fighting the fire. At noontime the next day, hundreds of people filled the town hall auditorium across the street to sing, to pray, and to hear their pastor, the Reverend Dr. Barry Cass. The church is the people, not the building. That having been said, we have to say that we have suffered a great loss. That that building, since 1842, has been the place where this congregation has gathered, found its strength, had its arguments, found peace, and turned to to celebrate, to mourn, to be together. For the next da-da-da amount of time, we will be gathering somewhere else. But the heart of the congregation, which is in each of you, will still be with us. Through January, the congregation will worship in the town hall auditorium at 10 o'clock a.m. in summers. The Champs Place Food Pantry will also be moved there, at least temporarily. The conference is accepting online gifts on behalf of the Summers Church at ctucc.org slash donate. Visit our website as well to see our year in review. 2011 was, well, it was quite a year. We had major storms in January and then again in February, and one of them brought down the social hall roof of our church in Plainville. Then a tsunami struck Japan in March. In April, the United Church of Christ recognized the Holy Joe's Cafe Ministry of the First Congregational Church UCC in Wallingford with an Imagine What's Possible Award. Chaplain Andrew Schultes testified more than once on our website to how precious these gifts of coffee to service people overseas truly are. Interim Conference Minister Chuck Wildman visited Korea in April, and his host there, Gwak Shon Kyun, celebrated communion with him in Guilford at our annual meeting in October. We remixed worship in May, helped our neighbors in Massachusetts when a tornado struck there in June, approved new governance structures for the National UCC at General Synod in July, spent days in the dark after Tropical Storm Irene in August, experimented with the church in September, and then spent another week in the cold and also in the dark after the Halloween snow. We took on Mission One's seemingly impossible goals in November, and we achieved every last one. Then we stood stunned before the Saugatuck Congregational Church UCC in Westport when fire consumed some of the fellowship spaces in its building just before Thanksgiving. The search committee completed its listening sessions in December, and as the new year entered its second day, we stood stunned again before the summer's Congregational United Church of Christ and the blackened beams of its sanctuary. 
Merciful heavens, what a year. 2011 was a year that stressed us in nearly every way. Violent weather, a volatile economy, except for depressingly consistent unemployment numbers. Protests overseas and protests around our nation. The strains of years at war fortunately ended in at least one overseas campaign as year ended. Fractious politics, and then the very movement of the earth beneath our feet. In the midst of it all, we helped our neighbors to pick up the limbs. We gave them a place to clean up. We sent our dollars to Japan and to Joplin, to Plainville and Saugatuck and Summers. We opened our eyes to new heights and depths for praising God. We brought people, the young and old, together for worship, for fellowship, and to serve. May 2012 be a year with less fury and more sound, with less division and more delight. But may it also and especially be a year in which we renew our love for our neighbor day by day. Take a look at our year in review, and for all the current news, visit us at ctucc.org slash news. The first retreat for those thinking about working for God for a living will be held at Silver Lake this weekend. David Beckman, president of Bread for the World, will speak at the United Congregational Church UCC of Tolland on January 15th at two worship services that morning and again at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Bread for the World advocates for aid to the hungry around the planet and help the UCC with its Mission One letter writing campaign. The Farmington Valley Association will bring author Graham Standish to First Church of Christ in Farmington on January 25th to speak about becoming a blessed church. Interim ministers will enjoy a fifth Tuesday learning event in Rocky Hill on January 31st. Stepping Stones returns on February 1st with Beyond Banners in Southington. And this year's Woodbury Leadership Workshop will be February 2nd at Andover Newton Theological School in Newton, Massachusetts. On February 7th, come to Hartford to learn about Podcasting 101 from Carol Vassar-Pettit of the Conference of Churches and Eric Anderson of the Connecticut Conference UCC. Learn about these events and more at ctucc.org slash events. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Patsy Bjorling for her reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you.